Hello and welcome to Mastering in the Box. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the Studio One project page and how we can use the project page to split a single stereo file into individual tracks and events. Hi folks, Smudge here and welcome to Mastering in the Box, your home for simple guidance on digital mastering and digital audio. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Studio One project page with specific reference in how we can use it to split a single stereo file into individual tracks and events. But before we get into the content of today's video, if you do want to know more about digital mastering, please make sure you hit that subscribe button below and make sure you tick that bell and select all to receive notifications and all of our videos moving forward. And if you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up because that will really help the YouTube algorithm to recommend this to other people. And if you want to support the channel, there'll be links in the description down below where you can support the channel and any support will be greatly appreciated. So I can already hear the question being asked, which is why would you want to split a stereo file up inside of the project page inside of Studio One? And I can understand that question being asked from all of those who will record and mix their tracks inside of the song page or maybe inside another DAW and they want to import all those individual songs into the project page. Well, that's fine because you then have all of your individual songs set up as individual tracks. But that's not always going to be the case. Let's say, for example, you've got a load of tracks that have been sent to you that have been put onto a CD or a, a DAT, or let's say you've recorded a live performance and you want to split those individual songs up from that live performance and process them individually. Well, how do you do that inside of the project page? Well, it's actually really quite simple. And as you can see here, I have a single stereo file. But what you can see is this stereo file is actually made up of two different songs. So this proportion here is going to be song two, and this proportion here is actually song one. But it's on one single stereo track. Now, if we go down to the actual WAV file itself, and if we right click, you'll see there's three options here. So you've got split events at cursor, split track at cursor, and split track and event at cursor. Now they all do different things and I'm gonna break these down for you now to show you exactly what they do so you can choose the right option for your particular scenario. So option number one that I'm gonna show you, which is gonna to apply to most people, probably 99% of people and 99% of the time, this option will apply to you. So if you set the timeline where you want it, you put the cursor and if you right click on the stereo file, you will have the option here that says split track and event at cursor. Now, once I've clicked this option, what you will see is we've now got a separation of the tracks. So on the left hand side now, you'll see we have track one and track two. But not only does it separate the tracks, it also separates the events. And what I mean by this is it moves the track two from the same timeline place as track one. Now this is really quite important because this is where it's gonna to start to allow us to add a pause in a completely separate way. And this will make more sense when I show you option two. So if I now right click on the bottom file or track two, I can then click reset pause and it's now allowed us to have a pause between track one and track two. So now we have full control of the two individual tracks and we can now start to apply our own individual fades at the beginning and the end of the end of the songs. So we can add a fade between the end of track one and track two. But also up here, if we select the tracks on the left hand side, we can now add the individual processing that we need for those individual songs. We can add the individual metadata and they are two completely separate tracks and events. So this is going to be the most popular choice for probably 99% of people. If you're doing something like, uh, like a DAT transfer or a CD transfer, then once you've got that stereo file into the project page, if you right click and you want to select the option for split track and events at cursor. Option number two is going to be the option for split track at cursor. Now, if I right click on the stereo file, click split track at cursor. If I now click, right click again on the stereo file and click reset pause, nothing happens. What you have to do is click on the actual track marker itself and then select reset pause. 
But interestingly, and this is one of the big differences between the two options of split track and event against split track at cursor, is the actual WAV file doesn't move. So you can still process the track individually, so track two, you can select the option here on the left hand side and add your plugins as you would do normally, but only the track marker moves. The WAV file doesn't move, whereas in option one, by splitting the track and event, both the track marker and the track move with the pause. So why is this gonna be important? Well, this is gonna be great for someone who wants to, let's say you wanna record, you're doing your recording of the, your live band and you're doing your master of the live session. You may wanna separate the actual tracks themselves, but you may want the songs to flow between one and the other. So rather than having dead space in between the two tracks, you're now gonna have a continuation of the actual waveform itself. So there's gonna be no dead space in between the tracks. Another way you could look at this as well, let's say you're actually recording you know, in a studio and you want one track to fade into the other. Well, this will apply in this option as well. So you're not gonna have dead space inside of that empty space itself. It will just be a continuation of one song to the other, but you will still have that separation when it comes to uploading to a streaming platforms. You will still have individual tracks that you can process individually, add the individual metadata, but it will just be a continuation of the sound from one track to the other. And the last option, if we right click on the stereo file again and click split event at cursor, you will still have one individual track, but you now have two events. Now I've been trying to think of some use cases for this, and honestly, I'm really struggling to find some use cases where this will actually be beneficial. The, whilst the event's actually been split, the track hasn't. So any processing you do on the track will apply to both events. The project page doesn't offer any features for event-based processing, so I can't apply different processing to the individual events. So anything I do once again to the individual track, it's gonna to apply to both events. The only logical thing that I can think is, once again, if you're doing a live recording and you do wanna do a basic master and apply the same processing to all the tracks, then this would be great just so you've got the separation, but you can't add any individual metadata you can't export the tracks differently. So once again, it comes back to the only logical thing I can really think of is you can add different fades, or if you wanna go through and you want to manually adjust any of the volumes of the tracks, you can do it on an event basis rather than on a track basis. So the same applies here. But this is such a rare case that I can't think of a logical use in, in which I would use this in my workflow for all for my setup. If personas add in event-based processing, I do hope they do inside of the project page because this will be amazing. Then what you could do is you could then go into one individual track, you could select the timeline, you could then right click, you could then split event. And then let's say if there was a way to do events-based processing, if I wanted to do something for the second half of the track, which I didn't want to do to the first half, this would be a great option. But at present, Studio One does not offer events-based processing inside of the project page. So it's a feature. I don't think it's very useful, certainly not for my workflow at present, but I just thought I'd show you how to do this anyway. So that's it for today's video, and I hope you found this useful. This was requested by someone in this part of the Facebook group who come up with the question of how do you split stereo files inside of the project page. I'm still yet to find the logical use for this split event at cursor, but certainly the split track at cursor and the most important one for me, which is split track and event at cursor, I use them lots, certainly when it comes to people who send me things like DATs and CDs, or if there is a live performance that comes through that needs mastering, then it's so beneficial, it's so easy to do, and it just gives me so much more flexibility around the whole mastering process. If you do want to know more about digital mastering, then please make sure you hit that subscribe button below and make sure you tip that bell and select all to receive notifications on all of our videos moving forward. And if you like the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. The more likes I get on these videos, the more it gets shown to other people, the more that other people hopefully enjoy the content and the more the channel will grow as well. 
And if you did want to support the channel, then I'll leave links in the description down below where you can support the channel through buymeacoffee.com. And if you're interested in any of the mastering services or a mix and mastering critique service I offer, there will also be links in there for fiverr.com where I advertise my services at present. So all that's left for me to say is I hope you'll keep safe and well, and I'll see you in the next video coming real soon.